Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Erin Ducat with Ducat Chiropractic and Sports Medicine here in Bloomingdale, Illinois. And today I'm interviewing Roxana Opeña, a licensed massage therapist who practices with me at my location uh, to learn a little bit more about massage therapy, how we can take care of our muscles, and have better wellness in 2021. So thank you for joining me, Roxana. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so can you tell us just a little bit about how you got into massage and started practicing here in Bloomingdale? Yeah, sure. Um, well, from age 24 to 34, um, I'm older than that, by the way, <laughs> I got myself involved in like a yoga group and learned um, kind of like an Asian form of energy, like Tai Chi, yoga, and um, healing, kind of healing work. And I did that for 10 years and was really heavily involved with that group. Um, and loved the work. However, the group wasn't really, I wasn't growing with them. And so I decided to leave after a 10 year career with them. So wow. I really needed to reinvent myself. Um, and when I, I was in New York, living in New York, and when I moved back here, um, shortly after I moved back here, I met my husband. And like three years later, <laughs> Um, we had a kid and I ended up being a stay-at-home mom. During that time, I was trying to figure out something. I was working for Whole Foods. I tried nannying. I was just really trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I, I always was called to massage therapy. But after being a stay-at-home mom for three years, I really, I'm not a stay-at-home mom type. I need to be doing something. And I found out that Elgin Community College had a really great massage therapy program and they were accredited um, schools so they, I could get financial aid to go. And that awesome. sealed the deal for me. I was like, okay, I'm going. And I went and, you know, it, was, it really was about marrying my life experience, like that 10 years of learning about healing and, and, and all the work that I did there, teaching meditation, mindfulness, like all kinds of stuff like that. Like, how do I marry that into my life? And massage therapy was a very um, great choice because there's integrity. You have to have a license to practice. Um, yeah, and, and that's basically kind of a nutshell story. <laughs> What's like the, the, your most favorite part about um, your education um, and the massage therapy program at Elgin Community College? Well, the staff there is, is incredible. The the ladies that run the program, well, there was men too, but mostly ladies, <laughs> um, they went through the program themselves at that school and then uh -huh. loved it so much and eventually got involved in teaching it. And it's a very uh, well-rounded program. What I learned after graduating was that a lot of the things that we learned, like a little dabble in different modalities um other schools weren't teaching like most schools taught like one like maybe eastern focused or like swedish massage but we learned a little bit of craniosacral a little bit of myofascial release we learned prenatal we learned icing and heat like there's so many things that we touched upon that uh that was really unique and and they have a very high rate of, uh, we have to take a test in order to get licensed. It's called right. the MBLEX. <laughs> and they have a really high success rate for passing that test. So I think it's like 100%. So that's pretty good. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that. that's awesome. I know, I know we have similar testing in chiropractic and it's always so nerve wracking to have to take those board exams, but so nerve really afterwards you're like, okay, whew, yes, so that's done. So with all the different techniques, do you feel like that's influenced um, the way that you treat your clients and, and your practice? A hundred percent. Actually, that reminds me, we did a cl uh, class called case study. Um, so we had a client that we were assigned and then it was a client with a problem. And then we had to come up with a treatment plan and make a case study report with this client. And I was able to grab from the different modalities in that I learned and really help this person out. And I, I definitely lean on all the different modalities when I work with people, for sure. 
Mm -hmm. So um, after school, um, kind of how did you start your practice and, and tell us after that? Yeah, my goal after school was just to start. I was like, I just need to get my hands on people. I'm not going to go crazy and try to have my own, you know, thing going. So I worked for Elements Massage in South Barrington for two years. Um, and then I got a really nice email after that from you because <laughs> you were my chiropractor and you yeah. helped me through a situation with my neck and my uh, nerves. So uh, you sent me an email to see if I wanted to come on because you had previously had employees work here as your massage therapist and you wanted somebody to be independent. And it was just a great opportunity for me to jump on board and and be an independent um, massage therapist. So, so how, did, how did that like change your, your practice, you know, going from working at, as an employee for, for a large franchise um, to, to be an independent massage therapist? Well, first of all, um, I get to use my full time. So it, when you go to a franchise, usually they cut your time. So they take off five minutes for getting dressed or five minutes for post massage. And then you're ended, you end up with a 50 minute massage when you go gotcha. there. Um, I'm not always the best with timing. And honestly, I think the body is in charge. So I always say, if I find a trigger point at the end of the massage, I'm not gonna be like, okay, 60 minutes, that's all you're getting. You gotta go now. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yep. <laughs> so I take my time, you know, and sometimes it's seven minutes. Like sometimes it's a 65 minute massage. Sometimes it's a 60 minute massage. Sometimes it's a 67 minute massage. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. So that's the first thing. Secondly, I use a lot of tools in my sessions. And when you go to these other places, you, they're all add-ons. So like I have these cup, cupping um, as a modality, um, usually- I love those. Out. Those feel love so them. good. I, so, I know they're young. There's different body types and not everybody loves them, but oh my God, feel so good when you use those on me. Yeah, they're, a lot of people say they're like magic. Um, somebody compared it to a magic eraser. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So I just throw them in, like I'm not going to charge extra to use these tools because they're, they're really helpful, you know, and I don't want, I don't have that pressure, like, oh, I wish I could use cups, but the client didn't pay that extra $20 to, for me to add that on. Um, so I have cups, I have um, Himalayan hot stones, um, and I have gua sha, which I love too. So that's so just for people who maybe have never had cupping done before, can you describe a little bit like, like, because they do look a little weird for someone who's never seen them. They do. And they, from what I, the reports that I get, they feel a little weird at first too. But basically, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell from this image, but I can suction cup this onto your body and it gives a nice pull. So when we're pushing into the body, it's a positive pressure. Um, but when we use the cups, that's like a, a lift, a negative pressure. So all the structures and tissues are supposed to glide over each other, but, you know, they get stuck and they stick to each other. And, you know, what that's when you start to feel uncomfortable, right? So, I mean, you probably have more to say about that, but um, when you put a cup on there and lift it, you can either move it or leave it in one place. It kind of allows the tissue to do something else besides just being pushed on. And a lot of times that's what it needs. And sometimes I could put two cups on and there, there's a lift going on um, and then I can twist them and it like lifts the muscle and I can kind of move it around differently than just with my hands. In Swedish massage, that's called petrosage, um, but with cups, it, it gives like a depth that you can't really get with your hands. It's really amazing. Yeah, and I know that cups is, or, you know, I mean, cupping therapy is something that I, I'm not trained to do. I don't do in my practice, but I know I've referred several patients, many patients over to you for that. And we see some really good results that we just weren't getting with, you know, traditional stretching or, or you know, manual muscle work. So that, that's awesome. So like Guasha, you, you held up a different tool, like that dark tool. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, these are gua sha tools, um, and 
they, these can be used in different ways. And I think in Chinese medicine, the goal is a little different than what we use in massage therapy. Um, so I just drop them. Um, <laughs> so it's like a light, I just use it really lightly. Um, word of warning, if you go on like, it, for people, they might go on YouTube or TikTok or something and start researching this. There are some therapists that use these really hard and cause a lot of bruising. Oh, and yeah, that's, that. We don't need to do that. That's not what the purpose of these are. Sometimes they might create a little mark, but really we're just looking for a shift in the tissue so that you feel better. And if we get that, we don't need to go like Oh, aggressively yeah. to look for something visual you know it's more about the feel so basically it's a lot of it is focused on the superficial fascia layer and just getting some restrictions worked out um with these and then when that's loosened up sometimes it can go a little bit deeper into the muscle that's now you know i'm kind of curious what's the difference between using your himalayan hot stones and then using something like gua sha because i mean they both like you use it and press it into the muscle, right? Yeah. Um, so the salt stones I tend to use when people are really sensitive. This can feel really like to some people, it can feel really aggravating. And if they're very restricted um, and suddenly this is creating a lot of circulation or, you know, like the nerves and everything's like waking up. So suddenly they're like, oh my gosh, like I don't like that feeling or, or, or just the initial touch itself is really sensitive, then I'll, I'll go for the heat and just calm everything down. And usually that's a very calming, you know, feeling. And um, I may or may not have to go in with a cup or gua sha um, and just use a hot stone. Cool. Yeah. Well, like, so what type of conditions or what type of presentations, like what, what type of person needs massage therapy or be a good client to see? I know that's kind of a broad question I just asked. Anybody. <laughs> well, of course, everybody, well, pretty much everybody likes, likes, you know, likes touch and it will be very relaxed to massage, but like who really, you know, you think would therapeutically find, find benefit with your type of care? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, again, like across the board, like some people just really want to relax and their muscles are really tight because they're just so stressed out. So those, if you have that going on, getting a nice Swedish relaxation massage is great. I really love doing therapeutic work with like, somebody says I'm having pain and they point to a specific area. Well, I know the anatomy and like your hips. I've been doing a lot of hip stuff lately. Um, <laughs> like going in and, uh, you know, I, I don't only use tools. I use my hands a lot and um, a lot. Sometimes I, I move your limbs so that and pin a muscle. So uh, we're allowing the muscle to stretch in a certain way. Um, so pain relief is a great reason to get a massage, you know, whether it's your lower back or your your hips or your, your shoulders, a lot of neck. Um, you know, from sitting, everybody's been working from home uh, and feeling it because they're not working in ergonomic spaces, you know, so you're, right. a lot of people are really feeling it right now. So those, you're having neck pain and shoulder pain or back pain uh, from sitting all day, you know, it's really nice to come and get those specific areas worked out. Um, so do you have any like tips um that, you know, there's general advice that you could give us just about either relaxation, muscle health, or things that can kind of help us out right now, especially since we're all still pretty stressed out with this pandemic. I can't believe it, we're like a year in, and it's, yeah. but what are, what are some words of wisdom you can share with us? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is hydration. Um, I know I have a hard time with that sometimes, but when I drink enough water, I feel really different. And it just makes a big difference in your muscle tissue um, as well. Um, as far as getting a massage goes, it's okay to come in and say, I just wanna to relax today or, or come in with a specific issue. Um, and then a lot of people ask like, why is my this part of my neck bothering me? Why, you know, why? What's going on? I just want to yeah. know why. And that's like a huge can of worms. Like it can be your hydration. It can be your, 
posture that you're doing every day. It could be the way you sleep. It could be your nutrition. It could be an old injury. So if you really want to know why, it's good to like study about it a little bit for yourself. Like if, if you add in water, does it make it better? Or if you just can't figure it out, you know, if a massage isn't helping, then seeing you like us working together um, is really helpful. Sometimes you need a specific exercise to do. So I just recommend trying to figure it out and like getting help, you know, where you need it because it is possible to figure it out. Yeah, and I think that, that dovetails really nicely with kind of the approach that I personally take with patients, you know, it's, you know, first day where we're just figuring out, okay, what, what's the structure that's causing the pain? And we have this picture like, well, why is this structure so, is it, they've been working on their laptop on their couch for the past 11 months and finally the body's like, enough is enough, or is it stress or hydration or diet or, or they're not moving enough, you know, so those muscles are screaming. Um, so it is really cool to be able to work. And then, you know, behind the scenes, just to kind of explain this for, for clients and patients of ours, um, you know, we can kind of talk and, you know, sometimes you'll tell me that, hey, by the way, patient, you know, Jane Dell, she, you know, got a lot of tightness along this section of her neck and here, can you check on that doc to see if there's something that you can do from your angle? And then I'm able to kind of Come back and tell you what I found, and we can kind of work together. Yes, yes. patient, like teamwork, like you said, to get mm -hmm. them and and hopefully help them understand a little bit more about what's causing their problems. So yeah, and it's amazing when when I love working with you. I love that teamwork, um, which is definitely different than working for a franchise. Um, and yeah. to see like to have a patient come in and. For me to say, you know, it sounds like that's a nerve thing going on. I think you should book your a longer session with Dr. Ducat. And then, you know, seeing that person do that and go see you. And then like three or four weeks later, they're out of pain. And it's just really rewarding, you know, that's for that awesome. to see that happen. So um, how can uh, patients uh, find out about you and your practice or, or book a massage? Um, how can I get a hold of you? You can uh, book online at Roxana, R-O-X-A-N-A, Opena, O-P-E-N-A dot com. Okay. Um, or you can call me, 773-677-4604. Uh, um, yeah, or email too. It's my first and last name, R-O-X-A-N-A, O-P-E-N-A, L-M-T at gmail.com. Awesome. Yeah. And as far as like availability, um, what, what days do you see clients? Yeah, Tuesdays I'm here from like 3 till 8, 8.30. Um, Wednesday mornings, if somebody, it's appointment only on Wednesday mornings after 9. Um, and then Thursdays I'm here all day from 8 a.m. And then I have a nice break in the middle of the day, but then I'm here till like 8, 8 p.m., 7.30, something like that. Um, I'm flexible. And then <laughs> Friday morning, I'm here at eight from like eight till noon, 1230. And then Saturday mornings, I'm here as well. And then if there's an emergency thing going on, I have flexibility, like other days of the week, just have to reach out. Okay, great. So you've got a variety of different hours for like during the mm -hmm. day and then, and then for the after work and weekend crowd too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this I learned a lot about cupping, and I was really excited here too to hear about the difference between the hot stone and the gua sha. So I learned a little something today, and I'm sure yeah. patients learned a lot about you in massage therapy. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for for having me. I really enjoyed it as well. It's my pleasure. All right.